Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT and taking a look at point craft and plate solving in the program. Uh, plate solving has become an important part of astro photography over recent years. Uh, it's used now for everything from getting polar alignments to getting right on target in APT that's using go to plus plus or the aim feature and uh, it's also used for automatic meridian flips so if you don't get this set up correctly uh, none of that's going to work. Now I've done a previous video in my pre-install series covering setting up various apps that are used for plate solving. Um, APT uses external apps and you need to have them installed and configured correctly to work. So I'll link to that up the top here and uh, also put it in the description so if you haven't set up your plate solving software uh, I'll show you how it shows you how to install the four that are supported by APT. So having said that, let's get into it and try and get it all working for you. Okay, in APT, the first thing you want to do to get your point craft and plate solving working correctly is to go to your tools tab and down the bottom to the object calculator. Now you need to make sure first of all that your pixel size and your sensor size are correct. Um, this should be auto filled in by APT when you connect your camera but if you have one that doesn't or you've selected not to allow it to happen you'll need to make sure that's correct there. Now the one change to point craft from 4.30 to 4.4 uh, is the fact that you no longer need to uh, recalculate your sensor and size to match any uh, field of view uh, region of interest that you're using. Uh, previously you'd have to halve, if you're using a half region of interest you'd have to actually set your uh, width and height to half but it now does it automatically so that's a good point there. Um, the next thing you need to do is at least your focal length of your camera, of your lens or your telescope. Um, depending on what you're using, if you're using a camera lens with a DSLR and you have in a, the advanced tab of your settings to uh, determine the focal, focal length automatically, simply take a picture, it doesn't matter of anything with your lens cap on or whatever, and it will automatically fill in the focal length for you for a DSLR. But if anything else you're using, you need to fill these in. Um, it is possible to do your initial plate solving without this and I will show you that. I do have a profile set up in here but I'm not going to use that so I can show you exactly what's going on. So I'm not going to set any of this. Um, you, need, you generally need to uh, set the focal length and if you want to use uh, auto focus aid you'll need to get the diameter as well. And that's simply uh, the focal length divided by the f stop, the f number of your uh, telescope or lens. <coughs> Pardon me. So once you have that done, and as I said, I'm not doing it at the moment because I want to do something uh, to show you the totally blind one. Uh, once that's done, uh, you can either go to your gear tab and select point craft or the Alt P shortcut, which will open it as well. So first off, we'll take a quick run in to look at the settings, and uh, I've been over all these previously in a. Uh, another video when setting up APT to begin with but just to quickly go over it you need to have your programs all installed as I said there will be a link for that in the description on how to do all that uh, and configured of course and then you just need to make sure the paths are correct to those files you simply click on the dot why is it going to APS uh, and make sure your path is correct and click it on it it's okay so that's how that works there, just make sure they're all done and correct. Uh, you then need to check what uh, plate solver you want to use for what. I generally use ASTAP for everything. I find the latest version, um, and I'm using the D80 catalogue, it seems to work extremely well for me. So I'm happy with that for both near and blind solving. Um, and then you've got your choice of what to do. I always use near solving. I'm generally sure my scope is pointing pretty close, but you can override that anyway. Um, I'll show you that as well soon. Then you need your plate solving times out. I'm going to extend this out to, uh, we'll go two minutes, simply because I'm going to do the full uh, total blind solving and I don't know how long that's going to take. I've never tried it. 
um, then you have your go-to attempts and everything like I said I cover all this in the other video uh, about setting this all up but I'll just quickly run through it again your go-to attempts how much how many times go to plus plus will try to get on target before giving up uh, the error distance so how far away from the center of the target it can be um, on my good mount I set this down to 15 on my not so good mount I set it at 25 or 30 it really depends on how good your mount is uh, the pause is just a pause after it gets to the uh, position before it uh, starts taking an image uh, relative go to so it uses a solve position to calculate where it needs to go to for the next um, move so that's a good one to have uh, use DSL crop factor DSLR crop factor if you're using a DSLR and you're getting the wrong field of vision for it uh, you may need to use this I've never had a problem with my crop sensors so I've never had to use it but just in case it's there no auto sync some mounts don't like your auto syncing it confuses them that's up to you whether you use that or not flip direction sometimes the mount will go in the wrong direction with go to plus plus or the aim feature and you may need to reverse it just you know that's on a per mount i haven't needed to but maybe you will um, your ra offsets and deck offsets now if this is if you're using say a a guide camera or a finder electronic finder scope to get on target and it's not totally aligned with your imaging scope uh, you may need to put a bit of an offset so they that the finder scope and the uh, imaging scope can be together on the same target your do default point craft exposure this is used um, if you're using a filter wheel it'll generally use the filter wheel times if you have them set up in there if not it'll use this time and if you don't have another time set in here it will use whatever time you've got set in your camera tab so that's how that one goes um, the only thing is if you use the auto button for some reason it ignores your filter settings and goes straight to the time listed in here or the camera tab I've posted on the forums asking Ivo why that happens and we'll see how that goes uh, if you're using a filter wheel the default filter um, generally you'll be using a luminance filter and that's what I've got set there so I, I can go straight to that one and nice and bright images uh, reduces exposure time of course default binning um, I use 4x4 on my normal camera this is the simulator camera down and has 1x1 so I'm stuck on 1x1 in here uh, but 4x4 just produces a smaller image um, quicker download etc that's the only reason I use it there uh, default gain this is the gain this camera uses again um, so I just leave it at that I set it generally generally it's set to my normal gain when I do it so I'll just leave it at that uh, if you're using a DSLR seeing these aren't images you're going to want to be keeping or anything I do recommend using the the L mode if you're using a DSLR smaller images faster downloads etc again now if you using your DSLR and it's not in your full sensor size you might be using um, a small or medium image size uh, you may need to check this one for blind solving otherwise it won't work um, so just be aware of that you know if you're using a small raw or you're shooting in JPEGs at medium or small or whatever uh, you may need to fix that DSLRs again recommend using a an unstretched image uh, better results and a default ISO for a DSLR so you know, if you're not using a DSLR none of these matter for DSLR settings and it goes the other way uh, your binning and gain and everything won't affect a DSLR setting so if you have them set or not it doesn't matter so that's the settings now I'll quickly go over the buttons you have the objects um, when you click on that with just a mouse it opens the object browser to select an object to go in here which is about where you're pointing uh, but you can also use just a scope position if you're pretty sure it's pointing where it should be pointing uh, if you hold down shift and click on the object button it will load whatever coordinates are in your um, planetarium if you've got one connected um, so that's how that one works then you have your auto button and auto is fully auto it takes the image uh, solves the image and sinks your mount all in one go um, 
to override your setting for whether it's blind or near solving if you hold down shift and click on the auto buttons it will use blind solving if you hold down control and click on it it will use near solving so you can override your settings in there uh, pardon me now you've then you've got your solve button so this is a manual start of your solving you've taken an image yourself uh, where you use a shoot button or whatever and you tell it to solve the image um, so that's easy enough there if you hold down shift and click on it you can set your own custom field of vision um, though why you'd want to do this I don't know but uh, maybe you do for some reason and you, once you've done that you click on go and it will go and try and solve the image I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want it to do that then you have your blind button which is just blind solving um, if you hold down shift and click on blind which I'll do shortly uh, that's when you get a complete blind solve and I'll show you how that works uh, sync button if you've solved you can sync your mount and your planetarium with the, the uh, results of your solve now the store button is once you've solved an image if you want to save that location in your custom items you can do that by hitting the store button and then go in and fill in it'll open up the object browser and you can fill in the appropriate details of what you know, what the object is etc etc uh, the show button simply shows it in uh, your no, there's no, no results to show sorry simply shows the results in your planetarium and that's all that one does uh, the objects again if you it's exactly the same as up here uh, except it just fills in this box here so the object browser or details from your um, planetarium um, all the solved results so you can try and get to that one and then you have your go to plus plus and your aim I'm not sure yeah I need a solved image I can't see what that I'm a, I've never tried the plus the shift on that one so I don't know but the go to plus plus will just move to the target aim lets you pick a point on a solved image and it will then you hit the go to plus plus and it will move to that point on the image but I'll show you all that now so let's go so we're going to do a completely blind solved no position in here uh, no focal length or anything in here as I said as long as you have this box correct um, it's possible for it to solve I don't know how this is going to go I've never actually tried it so first of all is to take an image uh, this should be a three second image using the shoot button come on it's amazing how slow a uh, simulated camera can be okay so I've got an image up here I'm going to hold down shift and click on blind so now I don't know how long this is going to take we might be here 10 seconds we might be here half an hour well two minutes because it was failing that time so as tap is just running around all the sky trying to find what you've got and what it can match with it and the hard part is it's got to find a field of vision that works oh that wasn't too bad 18 seconds there you go a totally blind solve so what that gives you now if you didn't know what your focal length is uh, you now have it here so my 560 millimeter so I can now go into your object calculator and hit 560 and I know my scope is uh, 102 millimeters in diameter so now that's all set up for uh, using uh, autofocus and plate solving so that's done there okay uh, what else do I need to show you so now I can sync because using the blind or the solve button doesn't auto sync so you can sync it yourself um, now it all depends on if you want to use this target for it but I'm going to actually move around um, go to the oh yeah, I said the uh, show button there you go uh, go into Stellarium and there you go I'm just off the name Angel Nebula there it's a little one in the middle of it and uh, this is the type of thing you might want to use your aim button for to be truthful uh, you might want to get in and get in between these targets to line them all up so but I'm not going to bother getting into that one I'm going to go to uh, what are we going to go to objects uh, uh, no it's not up at the moment go to deep sky I'm gonna to go to the horsehead nebula so I click go to 
so this will show you how it fully works um, of course doing it on a real setup is slightly different or not slightly different you do it the same way but the results will be slightly different so for this one I'm just going to enter the scope position rather than the object I could go to object um, and do it in there um, I might do an auto blind sold so the auto blind sold click and blind and click on auto so it'll do the imaging it will do the solving and it will sync the mount to this position so we just wait and see there you go so it's solving there you go two seconds geez that was a long one um, and as again it comes up with your focal length and everything else which is good and of course then you can go to you don't need to sync this because it's done it automatically um, so now I can go to the show button and we'll go into Stellarium and there you go it's got it all lined up and everything for me to see where it is so that's good there so if I'm not quite happy with that I want to get somewhere else um, basically it's the same thing so objects the only problem is since all these new features IFOs put in a little bit slower on the object browser but I'm going to the Horsehead Nebula and I simply hit go plus plus and so now it'll move around and try and get exactly on or within 50 pixels of this now the simulated one pretty much gets within one or two pixels just about every bloody time but in real life that won't happen it'll generally get pretty close and move around a bit occasionally but there you go solved in two seconds and we're one pixel off Coolish. Um, I'm not sure what the. All oh, right. There you go. So if you shift it at manual lane, distance to target is a tiny little bit. So that's what that does. Okay. So I can do that now. I can click on the aim button. And then what that does, it gives you the chance to pick somewhere you want to go to. So I'll say we want to go to this little one over here. You click on that and you get this circle and I'm sure that if I shift click on that now there you go it tells me how far away is in RA and deck and that's what the shift on the aim does so now I'm just going to click glow to plus plus um, yeah I didn't need to because it just synced it anyway but there you go I'll just click yes it doesn't hurt it not for this one anyway and it's now going to be moving take an exposure and try and get you right on that target so we'll see how we go oh there you go <laughs> perfect mount don't you love them oh, I wish real mounts were like this so you can see the plate solving can be quite fast um, two seconds again so I said most of mine are generally one or two seconds so I can have a very very short um, time so I'll put this back to 30 seconds uh, which is more than enough as you can see and okay on that but that's it for uh, plate salt point craft and plate solving um, if you have any problems just ask in the the, the uh, comments below or better yet go to the APT forum sign up over there and you know, post it there and people will try and get in and give you a hand to work it out uh, but that's it for this video I think I've covered it all pretty well now and I hope you can get it all working uh, take care all which is clear skies and hope 2024 is a better year for everyone. Take care. Bye.